The study of chemical thermodynamics is absolutely one of the most invigorating things to be able to do in chemistry and is generally left until the last unit of study by most teachers and professors for this reason, because it wraps up everything. And it actually addresses the most fundamental of all questions in chemistry and in terms of the universe and how it operates. So we have a reaction. Here's methane gas undergoing combustion to form CO2 plus H2O. And I like to do this with my students. I like to say, okay, take that reaction right there and tell me everything that you know about it up until now in terms of your studying of chemistry in, in high school. And boy, there's a lot of stuff here. We can actually address this equation. Yeah, we understand that uh, the chemistry of certain atoms and we, we know even atomic theory and we can talculate, talk about, <laughs> we can talculate. Well, we can. And we can talk about all kinds of things in terms of the atom and how it's structured and what the protons, neutrons, and electrons are doing at any one time in a molecule and how you can form covalent bonds uh, to be able to form uh, these molecules. And then what those covalent bonds actually do in terms of polarity uh, and, um, and how uh, these molecules here are reacting in a 1 to 2 to 1 to 2 ratio. The equation speaks molish, so therefore we're talking about... Um, uh, uh, mole quantities here, but we can actually convert masses to moles and be able to do stoichiometry to solve for very interesting problems. Oh, what else can we do? There's so much! Because these are gases, we can actually uh, apply PV equals NRT to a lot of these uh, uh, chemicals here to be able to solve for various types of problems that we have um, uh, it, it, with pressures and temperatures and volumes and things like that. What else can we know about this? Hey, you know what? Oh, hey, you know, I was just thinking about uh, chemical bonding, and then I was thinking about Lewis diagrams. And we could draw a Lewis diagram for every one of these chemicals here, and we could talk about the hybridization of every one of those chemicals, and the three-dimensional structures of all of these chemicals as well. We can actually understand that if there's a change in oxidation number, which there is, zero going to minus two here for oxygen, that this must be a redox reaction, and we can talk about electron transfer here as well. We can talk about all the properties of these chemicals and how CO2, when it dissolves in water, you take those products and dissolve them in water, you get carbonic acid. And we can talk about Ka values, and we can, are you getting tired yet? We can actually uh, talk about, we can calculate the delta H for this reaction and talk about it being exothermic and what that means in terms of system and surroundings. Oh my, there's so much that we can actually discuss here. And even the rate of this chemical reaction, we can write rate equals K times the concentration of these two chemicals. And then we can find a series of elementary steps that we can add together and see if uh, uh, we can uh, uh, figure out what the uh, rate law is going to be from those, perhaps. Oh, all of that kind of great stuff. Except for maybe this. Why does this reaction take place? Now, it does, by the way. And it takes place whether you are going to be in control of it or not. Now, sure, we can actually spark methane to actually combust to make these products, but you know methane's burning all over this planet all day long, and we have nothing to do with its exploding, exploding in the atmosphere. It can just actually spontaneously ignite. Why does that occur? And remember when we were talking about the redox unit, if a reaction is spontaneous in one direction, it's non-spontaneous in the opposite direction. So not spontaneous in this direction, but spontaneous in this direction. Why? Why do some chemical reactions occur and others don't? Every chemical reaction that actually occurs spontaneously has something in common with another reaction, too, that reacts spontaneously. And scientists have been trying to figure out that, that for, for many years. Well, they had <laughs> tried to figure it out. It's kind of almost, well, it's not done yet. But the thing is, we have a pretty good grasp as to why these things happen. That's a cool question. Why? Now let's address it.